Mom told Aunt Katie that stuff happened a long time ago, and she should let it go. But I guess Aunt Katie still hasn't gotten over it, even after all this time. I could tell the conversation was making Dad uncomfortable. He didn't seem thrilled to be hearing a story about one of Mum's ex-boyfriends, and Vincent didn't look. Like he was enjoying the conversation that much either. Then Aunt Katie accused Mum of stealing one of her meatballs too, but Mum said Grandma put more meatballs in her bags, so that must mean she likes her better. The rest of us could tell this conversation wasn't going anywhere good, so we just started clearing the table. Vincent volunteered to do the dishes because apparently he's. Still trying to score points with our family, but if you ask me, he's wasting his time because the only person he needs to impress is Grandma. After dinner, everyone was happy to go to their separate ways, but Mum wanted us to watch TV in the living room as a family. And even though it was a nice idea, getting twelve people and a dog to agree on what television show to watch is next to impossible. Aunt Veronica wanted to watch a show called The Great Cake Fake Out, which is a reality TV competition, which these pastry chefs make cakes that look like a regular objects, and then contestants have to guess which things are real and which are desserts. But I'd be a terrible contestant on that TV show because every time I think something's Real, I'm wrong. This old leather boot is actually a five-layer cake. What? Mum vetoed watching that show because it caused a lot of trouble in our house. When Manny saw it, he started thinking everything was cake, which isn't okay when you're in a public restroom. Jump, jump! Here, Manny thinks that's the cake, so he's eating the toilet seat. That's inc- what? What's he doing? Loads of dirt on there. To make matters worse, now Manny's suspicious of regular food because he thinks it could be something else in disguise. So dinner takes twice as long because Manny won't put anything in his mouth until Mum proves it's really food. Mmm, true, true. I I can actually see how a person could start to get confused over what's real and what's not. Because Rodrick's been messing with me for years. When I was little, Mum and Dad would sometimes put Rodrick in charge of my bed bedtime stories. One time, he told me that horses were imaginary creatures like dragons or mermaids. I'm pretty sure I'd actually seen horses in real life, but Rodrick convinced me. I just imagined it when I went on a field trip to a farm with my third grade class. I was shook up when I came face to face with a real life horse. <coughs> he's thinking, oh, it's an um, animal like mammoths and dragons, and he's thinking, what? Why is he screaming about me? I probably. Sh- Should have learned my lesson about trusting Roderick by now. But every once in a while, he gets me with something new. And when we went to the beach last summer, he told me a can of shark repellent that was actually Mum's hairspray. Since Roderick, since Mum vetoed the cake show, people started suggesting other things to watch. Aunt Gretchen wanted to watch the series about a celebrity family who always going from one crazy situation to the next. But Mum said those shows are as fake as the ones with the with the cakes, and nothing that happens on them is actually real. I don't know if she's right about that or not, but I bet those people who start in them are getting paid, and I wouldn't. Mind faking things a little if we got good ratings. Somebody used all my body wash. Well, if you wrote your name on the bottle, this wouldn't keep happening. Hmm. If my family ever does it. 
gets its own reality show, I've already got a name picked out for it. House of Heffley coming this fall. The reason it's never going to happen is that my family's too boring to have a show. And even though Roger got his lip stuck in the zipper of his coat once, it's not like you could base a whole episode on something like that. What my family could use is a good scandal. The thing that makes those reality shows interesting is that that there's always some big secret and it causes all sorts of drama. But if there, there's a juicy scandal in my family, everyone's done a good job keeping it under wraps. Mum wanted to watch her favourite show, which is about the royals. And from what I've heard about that family knows a thing or two about drama. The reason they're always dealing with problems is because the people who work for them leak their private business for report to reporters and it must be hard to keep a secret when you've got inside information that keeps somebody somebody's willing to pay for. You didn't hear this from me, but the king doesn't wash his hands after using the bathroom. Scribble scribble Keeping notes about his information, this guy's writing it down. But if I was actually a member of the royal family, it wouldn't be really tempting to cash in and spill the beans. The other brother, brother, life in the crown, Prince's shadow, by Prince Gregory. But when you're in a monarchy like those guys, there's a ton of pressure to get married and have kids to keep your bloodline going so you can stay in power. But instead of going to all that trouble, it seems like it would be easier to just clone yourself instead. I don't know if that thing is is even legal. But having another version of yourself would make dinner conversation a lot more satisfying. Unbelievable! When I say no lettuce, I mean no lettuce. I know, right? Turns out that's not the way cloning works though. I thought that when you clone something, it was like making a copy. But my science teacher said that when you clone a person or an animal, it starts off as a baby and it wouldn't be it would be a little weird changing your own diaper. The one thing I can say about monarchy is that those guys have clear rules about who's the next in line to the throne. But my family hasn't been settled who's going to take charge after grandma is gone. Feels to me like mum should take over the family next. But her sisters probably aren't going to let her without a fight. All I know for sure is that it's going to be a long time before my general is in charge. And if I ever get to be the head of the family by by then, it probably won't be that much fun. You've got mustard all over your bib again, puppy. Uh? Last night when we got when we went to bed, it was still super hot in the house from the cooking, so I had a lot of trouble falling asleep. And when I turned on the ceiling fan to cool things down a little, I discovered that Vincent's Vincent had hung his wet clothes on the blades to dry. After I hung his clothes back up, I laid back down and finally fell asleep. But I wasn't out for long before a knock at the front door woke me up. I was nervous to answer it because I couldn't imagine who would be knocking at that hour. So when I saw a pirate standing on the front porch, I wasn't prepared. Ah! It turns out the guy was actually Uncle Gary, my dad's young brother who's in a pirate costume. You guys got any food? I let um Uncle... I let Uncle Gary in the house and he explained what he was doing here. This summer he had been working at a baseball stadium and his job was to go under the bleachers and find a stuff people dropped during the game. But I guess he got hit in the head by one too many cell phones and he decided it was time to look for a new line of work. Yooch! Uncle Gary said he wanted a job where he could be outside and 
in the fresh air, and he started looking for opportunities at vacation spots. Then he found out there was an opening at a pirate themed amusement park on Rutty Neck Island, which he visited with the family as a teenager. Job opportunity. Skull Duggery Cove is seeking an actor to perform as legendary pirate Wild William three performances on weekdays. Five on week weekends. Before our trip, Mum told me how she and her sisters used to go to Skull Duggery Cove when they were kids, and how scary it was to get chased by Wild William. And one time, Aunt Gretchen got so scared she wet her pants. Ah, I'm gonna skin you all alive. According to Uncle Gary, the guy who had been playing Wild William had been in that role for thirty years, and he's finally retiring. But it sounds like it ended badly for that guy, and, they, and it wasn't really his choice to call it it quits. Uncle Gary said that a few weeks ago, Wild William was chasing some kids in his rowboat, just like he'd been doing every summer for thirty years. But the kids who who he was chasing ten. The table was on him and flipped his book. Wah! As if that wasn't bad enough, the manager at Skull Duggery Cove told Willy, Wild William he couldn't tell kids he'd skin them alive anymore because too many parents were complaining. Arr! So the actor decided he'd had enough, and now he works. At the fly shack on the boardwalk, where he has to wear a net over his bed, so hair doesn't get in people's food. Uncle Gary could go grow a decent bed, and he didn't want to show up for the job interview with a fake one. So he went to a hair hair salon and convinced them to sell him hair clippings. Then he glued the clipping to his face and head headed to Rutty Neck Island to apply for the job in a pirate costume. But he probably should have called head just before showing up because when he got to Skull Duggery Cove, the manager gave him some bad news. She said that pirates aren't as popular with kids anymore, so the team. Pop decided to move in a different direction. The manager told him Skull Duggery Cove was being rebranded as a butterfly sanctuary, and he should probably look for work somewhere else. Buttery, butterfly Garden, Butterfly, Butterfly Garden. Arr! Uncle Gary said he didn't want, didn't have enough cash to take the ferry back home, and he reached out to Dad. To see if he could send him some money, but when Dad didn't answer his texts, Uncle Gary looked up Dad's location on his phone and discovered he was right here on the island. <laughs>